Hi everyone, I'm Evan, I'm here with Max, and we're here to break down the new Breath of the Wild sequel trailer, also talk about any details we may have noticed or theories that we have, so let's take a look at the trailer. Alright, so uh, the first thing we see here are these green strands rising upwards. Definitely not Sheikah riding, but more likely Gerudo. Right before the scene changes, we see a little bit of words forming on the top right here. I looked it up to the Gerudo inscriptions and it looks like at least the first letter is S upside down and the last letter is L. It's kind of hard to tell but it looks like E A in between so it's probably seal. But we'll go more into the Gerudo stuff later in the video. All right, so here we see some cave paintings. Um this is most likely Ganondorf possibly demise but most likely Ganondorf. He's he's been known to wield a trident in the past. Um, most notably with like Pig Ganon, or even in Ocarina of Time actually, he had um, a trident on a horse. But he's also leading an army of archers in the back. Uh, it's hard to tell what species they are, so it's I, I can't really say much at this point on what's exactly happening in this, in this scene. Uh, in this shot specifically, I noticed that there are repeating symbols along this uh, strain that's going upwards uh, a couple times. So we doubt that it's just some random design, but it's some kind of spell coming from the hand that's holding this evil entity down. Here we finally get our first, first look at Zelda. Looks like she's on what I thought was some sort of like ox or something like that. But I don't, there's no creature in Breath of the Wild 1 that looks like this. So who knows what this is. Yeah, Breath of the Wild in terms of like its animal life, there aren't a lot of like really huge animals. I yeah. think that was kind of reserved in terms of like the scope for the guardians. Like you saw a guardian that right. was like this big scary thing. But in terms of like actual wildlife there really wasn't anything like this so i'm curious to see outside of horses like how these are incorporated it's probably into just the world yeah probably just a new species we haven't seen yet i mean obviously they're gonna have new content in it so that wouldn't be for, surprising yeah, for sure one thing to note here is these luminous stones or what what we think is luminous stones it's actually a bigger key factor in this than i thought uh, luminous stones if you look in the description in breath of the wild one um they say that in the description it's, it holds the souls of the dead so uh, this cave is full of them. So I'm sure that this has some sort of reference to like an un undead area or just a, like a grave in general, something like that. All right, so this is our first look at, a uh, close look at the heroes, Zelda and Link. Um, one thing to note here, and like the first couple of frames, you see lower on Link's belt, and there's no Sheikah Slate. Yes. So uh, those are probably gone. So no magnesis, no stasis, no bombs. Um, what are they going to do about that? I have no idea. Um, if you if you can't make Sheikah bombs, because you need the Sheikah slate, I believe, to do those, um, we go back to regular bombs. Who knows? Maybe we'll see the return of like normal Zelda items, quote unquote. Yeah, possibly. Um, and then, of course, Zelda's short hair. It's great. I love it. Um, and then also one thing is the uh, the clothing. That is a mixture of the Hylian tunic and the uh, champion's tunic. Yeah, it's it's together. interesting because prior uh, Link would wear that hood with the champion's tunic. Right. Uh, in some of the promotional material, and I like using that look as well in the game. But yeah, now he's got like new shoulder pads, and it looks like he's got more armor. Yeah. Than he did before. I'm I'm digging it. It looks really cool. Yeah. No, it look it looks really nice, and even Zelda with her hood now as well. We see a shot here of them drinking water. One thing I like to note in all of Breath of the Wild, even in other Zelda suit, but prominently in Breath of the Wild 1 is the Miyazaki references. I'm sure that the producers and directors over there have watched all of Miyazaki's stuff because there's some heavy influences in my opinion that I've seen. Uh, this is like straight out of Castle in the Sky. Um, yeah, and a lot of people have pointed out that Link in the champion's tunic looks a lot like the protagonist from Princess Mononoke. Mononoke yep. Um, yeah, there's lots of references and crossovers that I've seen. And actually, the next scene after this um, is pretty much straight out of Princess Mononoke. Like, the tentacles that come out of the demons in Princess Mononoke when they're trying to kill Ashitaka. I mean, that looks almost exactly like it, and it's killing this rat. Poor rat. Yeah, well, the rat's running away. Well, didn't really. Oh, no, no okay. <laughs> Never mind. All right, this scene, they're trying to cross a bridge, but the animal seems stuck, so they probably leave it behind. These bridge posts look kind of like Midna helmets, but I don't know, that's kind of a long shot. Uh, another closer look at Link and Zelda here. Nothing much to say about this shot besides she does get surprised, um, and Link looks at her. 
So what I might be thinking here is she knows something that he doesn't because he doesn't seem surprised. Yeah, that's a good catch. All right, so this is our first closer look at this evil form coming from the middle of the screen. Uh, two theories here. So he's got the Super Saiyan 3 hair. Hmm. He's got the loincloth. Um, he's got teeth. I don't know if that's much of a big factor here, but um, it, from first blush, it looks like Demise. Yeah, no. my original theory was that this was Demise because I couldn't think of any scenarios or any games, I should say, where Ganon had that long of hair and the first person I thought of with yeah. long hair was Demise. And we mentioned earlier about the Trident of Demise, which is only in Hyrule Warriors, so yeah. maybe they're adding some of those ideas from Hyrule Warriors into this game? It's, it's entirely possible, but again, that game isn't canon, so they might just be pulling stuff out of, out of thin air. Most likely, looking at this now, it's Ganon. There's a couple factors here. This chest um, injury is very, very closely related to the end of Twilight Princess. Um, the end of Twilight Princess, uh, Ganon had that injury right in the middle of his chest uh, where Link stabbed him. And then even after that, for more proof, the way this entity wakes up is with a neck snap. And how he was finally killed in Twilight Princess was with Zant neck snapping him. Um, or at least figuratively. So there's a lot of Twilight Princess references in this in this scene. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the timeline, if you look at the uh, child timeline, it does go Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, then Four Swords Adventures, and then right. potentially this game. So it's entirely possible that that's the timeline they are going down and they're taking stuff from all yeah. those games I just listed. If, if we are truly going down the child timeline, it does make sense. Like with the whole Arbiter's Grounds and everything, it is in the Gerudo Desert. They have Gerudo logos all over this this form, um, in the earrings and the in the loincloth. Um, it, it just seems to add up um, to f to feel like it's, it should be Ganon. But yeah, let's talk about this hand. Um, or, yeah, like or, is it infusing this character with the malice? Is, and I know you like it looks like the malice is coming out. So it's like, what exactly is that hand? My my theory is that it's, it's a seal. Mm. It's holding down this this evil entity, but the malice is still coming through. But who knows? Link is putting his hand up here. My uh, thoughts on this, I think uh, this look at his hand right here might be a part of the mechanics of the next game. Since there's no Sheikah Slate, this could be part of his new thing. Uh, he might be able to like have some skills with it. Um, who knows? Yeah. So maybe this is the new kind of power, in a sense, that's being utilized mm -hmm. by the world. Uh, whether it be Gerudo or something different is yet to be seen, but it's possible that instead of Sheikah technology, we'll be seeing this. Notable thing about like the scenes with like the hands and the hands holding um, and like saving each other These shots seem are more, more than sure. They're out of order. This is like a, a flashback moment of things going on um, Probably the first shot was this of them probably entering this shrine or dungeon or whatever it is um, Yeah, to me that that actually looks a lot like it could be a dungeon just the way that it's designed and the door is shaped It seemed like this is the grand opening to something bigger and I think that was one of the things that in Breath of the Wild 1, people were complaining about it's like there's no proper dungeon. It's also possible that like this is underneath Hyrule Castle. So it's like it's actually highly probable because yeah. in the last shot, it's it seems like at the moment this entity wakes up, then it reacts to the castle. It's probably deeper underneath the castle. Right. So that just leads to the question: like, what is this thing doing under Hyrule Castle? Like, how deep underground does this go? We know that the Guardians and even the Divine Beasts were discovered underground because Breath of the Wild takes place about 10,000 years after the last Zelda game on whatever timeline you choose to put it on. So I think it's interesting. Maybe we'll learn more about the history of like this Hyrule and like what really is hidden underground and like what secrets are there to be unfolded in the Breath of the Wild universe. I uh, got a shot here of this hand bringing Link upwards. So this also kind of cut back on my theory where I thought this hand would be Link's hand from the shot earlier, but obviously it's a separate entity, so not quite sure what this is yet. Another thing to note here that I saw is, are these eyes of Malice are the same that you shoot in Breath of the Wild 1? Um, mm -hmm. You know, mostly surrounding like Hyrule Castle, but like little patches of Malice here and there around the world, you shoot them and it'll usually make the Malice go away. If these eyes are still there after Ganon's gone, maybe this was a source of the Malice before? Ganon was banished away or whatever happened to him. Yeah, um, in Breath of the Wild, he was kind of hibernating to reincarnate. Is this maybe where it was coming from? We get our first wide shot of Hyrule Field. One thing I want to note here 
It's during twilight. I confirmed this in the game. It's not the morning. This is not a morning shot. This is definitely twilight time, which is the exact same time that final boss fight in Twilight Princess happened. Um, so this just adds up to be more Twilight Princess references. Same thing with uh, Link's Sheikah slate being gone. There is simply no Sheikah technology. There's no towers. Uh, there are no shrines, which is I, I can clearly see in Breath of the Wild 1 right now that uh, the shrine is there in the bottom right. But not in Breath of the Wild 2. Not in Breath of the Wild 2, it looks like. In the true ending of Breath of the Wild 1, they said that, you know, like the Divine Beast Van Ruta stopped responding um, after they defeated Ganon. So who knows what happened to that technology, but it's, it's clearly gone. It's not, not there anymore. So as the castle starts to shake, it moves upwards. Um, Breath of the Wild in space. Yeah, Breath of the Wild in space? Who knows? Um, it could go just up, several thousand feet up into the air, like a just another tower. It could just get into a bigger castle. Uh, yeah, again, like all the castle in the sky, Laputa, or, um, you know, even Skyward Sword, it could just go straight into the sky. Who knows what's going to happen? Or it could be like Howl's Moving Castle. It could be a yeah, moving castle. It could be, yeah, get legs or, and start walking around. <laughs> more Miyazaki references. Yes. The uh, director of Breath of the Wild, who's also coming back for Breath of the Wild 2, is also the director of Skyward Sword. Maybe he has some sort of affinity towards the Skyward Sword storyline he set up in that game and wants to kind of flesh it out a little bit more now that they're doing Breath of the Wild 2. And hopefully, because they're doing Breath of the Wild 2, they can put a little bit more emphasis on the story, which was one of my biggest gripes of the first game. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're taking a lot of the input from the last game. Um, so hopefully there'll be dungeons. Um, hopefully there'll be a, a much more fleshed out story. Um, hopefully you can pet doggos. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah, instead of just feeding them meat, can I, can I just pet the dog? Um, but yeah, hopefully they'll address some of those issues coming in, into this game, um, cause there's a lot that I wanted. Um, even though this game was very fleshed out. When I first saw this trailer, I was actually flipping out. I was like jumping out of my chair because I freaking love this game. Um, I don't think anybody expected a new Breath of the Wild so quickly. No, absolutely not. And, uh, I think... We could probably make some comparisons to Majora's Mask, um, and I believe, what was it, Wind Waker to Phantom Hourglass? Yeah, Phantom Hourglass takes place immediately after the Wind Waker when they're sailing away from Outset Island. But, but yeah, to, to be to be short with it, Zelda does not make proper sequels very often. Yeah, and it's really interesting, a lot of times Nintendo, with a lot of their games, just moves on to the next game, doesn't continue on with the assets that they currently have. Right. So it's cool to see them doing this now with Breath of the Wild, continuing that story, using these same assets that got them critical praise when the game came out back in 2017. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we love, I mean, I personally, I break this game. That is my main thing I love to do. I love to do combat stuff, so... Uh, I hope to keep a similar, at least the same engine. Um, I, I want to see how this, how these fights turn out. Um, I think that if they are keeping the same engine and they are just kind of like focusing on like the sequel aspects, I think it's pretty safe to say that we'll see like the same inventory system, the same uh, item breakability system. I hope so. I mean, of course, they want to uh, you know have a little bit of an evolution in the actual engine itself. In, sh in short, I want a little bit of growth, but also keep it a little bit of the same. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be a little bit more than what Majora's Mask was to Ocarina of Time, as Majora's Mask was pretty much exactly the same in terms of like the inventory system. Right. Um, Breath of the Wild 2 will probably have some new mechanics here and there. I think that's yeah. safe to say. Uh, but I guess time will tell how that will go. Yep. Uh, so that was our little trailer analysis theory breakdown of the new sequel trailer for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, thanks so much for joining us.